Welcome to Celebrity Cash in the Attic. This is the show that rummages around the homes of the rich and famous. And the items that we find we then take to auction to raise money for good causes. And today I'm on my way to meet a very well-known sports star. This Leicester-born footballer has had a 30-year career at the top of his game and he still holds the world record for the number of England caps, 125. He's played for 11 different clubs, made two European Cup finals and overall made more than a thousand league appearances. And as if that wasn't enough, he was face to face with Maradona during that infamous Hand of God incident. And that was because he was the goalkeeper. So, enough clues for you yet? I'm in Warwickshire and I'm on my way to meet one of our most legendary goalkeepers. It is, of course, Peter Shilton. Having made his debut for Leicester City at 16, Peter went on to play for his country in three World Cups before finally giving up the game at the age of 47. He and his wife Sue live in this large detached house in Warwickshire and I for one can't wait to have a look around. Coming up on today's Cash in the Celebrity Attic. Jaunty's a little starstruck. Look, he's on his knees to meet a living legend. There you go. Uh, I'm not having that, but thanks very much, Jaunty. <laughs> I try my hand at being a World Cup winner. I think it's my hunger? turn now, yes. <laughs> no, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> and despite nearly scoring an own goal on the rostrum. It's going three pounds, uh, three times. <laughs> Even, even, I'm, even I'm excited now. I think Peter might be an auction convert. Now, compared to winning the European Cup twice, how does that compare? It's gone very close to it. <laughs> <laughs> but will we be cheering or crying when the final hammer falls? Ah, John T. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Did your footballing career ever get off the bench? Uh, no, no, the less said about that, the better. But I'm really looking forward to meeting Peter, I have to say. Well, I should imagine he's got some fascinating stuff one way or another. I mean, his career spans from the likes of Sir Alf Ramsey, Gordon Banks, right through to Gaza. I know, it's incredible. So I'm hoping there'll be a lot of football related memorabilia. I can't wait to get in. Okay, we should go and meet him then. Let's do it. <laughs> Good morning, Peter. <laughs> Good morning. Nice great? to see you. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Made it special for you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really delighted that you've decided to do this. It's fantastic news. You know, to meet a living legend. Oh well. Uh, some say that. Some tell the truth. <laughs> <laughs> now, the sort of things that we're going to be looking at today. I mean, are they all football related? Um, well, I've got one or two football related things which could be of interest, but uh, I'm sure we can find one or two other items as well if we, uh, if we have a good look round. So what charity have you chosen to make the money for? Uh, Disability Sport England, which obviously you know, is involved with disabled athletes and uh, it's very close to my heart, so uh, hopefully we could do well for them. And have you got a figure in mind how much you'd like to raise? Well, I, I'd like to raise £600 if I could, because I think that could be, uh, you know, do some real good for, for, uh, for the charity and uh, uh, I'm sure that they'd put that to good use. Right, so we need to raise £600 for your charity, which I'm sure we can do at the auction. So should we go and see if we can find some items to sell? I'm sure John T's already found something, <laughs> knowing him. Yes, I'm, I'm sure, yes, I'm sure he has. <laughs> Is it this way? Yes, that okay, way. Come on then. I've got high hopes for our search today and, fingers crossed, we'll find some top-class football memorabilia tucked around Peter's home. Captain of our rummaging team today is expert John T. Herndon. He's been working in the antiques trade all his life and we're hoping he won't be scoring any own goals when it comes to the valuations. Ah, John T. Herndon. Look, oh. he's on his <laughs> knees to meet a living legend. There oh, you go. I'm not having that, but thanks very much, John T. <laughs> no, I thought it was actually time for tea, actually. We've got a, a, an interesting copper and brass tea set here. Where's it from, Peter? Mm. Well, I originally bought it oh, so many years ago now um, for my parents. I went on, a, on an England trip in Turkey, in Istanbul. Well, let's take a, a closer look at the set. We have the teapot here. Um, 
the main part of the body is copper, but the problem with copper is that it's relatively poisonous, so you need to line it. But if we look on the inside there, it's been lined with tin. Can you oh, see that? Ah, all right. that's, that's all right then. That's the reason why it has that silvered interior. OK, right. so that's all, it's all safe to drink out of, I promise you. Oh, good. And then we've got uh, a set, well, what was originally a set of six cups and saucers, uh, and the actual cups themselves are glass, so hence the reason why you've probably ended up with, we've only got four left. Yes. Uh, yes. That wasn't you dropping it, was it, Peter? Uh, no, I can definitely <laughs> say no, but uh, it wouldn't be a very good advertisement yeah. for me, would it? But, uh... we, do, we do know you're a safe pair of hands. <laughs> yes, but if you hopefully. Look, if, you, if you look at that, that's in the style of bohemian glass, which came from uh, the central part of Europe. But if we look at the holder of the glass itself, you can see that we have this Turkish influence. And if you look, we have the pierced crescent moon, and that's very Turkish. They, they have used that for centuries. So is it a, a set that you're interested in selling? Um, yeah, I think I'd like to put it in the, okay. the auction if you think it's okay. worthwhile. What sort of um, price, then? Dealers like to have complete sets, mm. uh, and it might be a wee bit difficult to replace those glasses, so yeah. don't expect too much. But we're still going to get 20 to £30 pounds for it. And the great part about this set, it's still it's amazing that everything here is all hand, hand either hewn, and the glasses themselves are hand-cut. Oh, right, yes. Okay. Well, is that good enough, do you think? Um, price, or well, you think I, I, I would hope for a bit more. More, but I take the point about, you know, I mean, if it's not complete, then yes. at the end of the day, yeah. uh, it, it does detract from it. But uh, no, I mean, I think whatever we get, I mean, it's, it's, it's of no real use to me now. So let's let's give it a go. Eh? OK, cool. right. Excellent. OK, well, that'll help, won't it? Really good. Yeah. yeah. Let's go and see what else we can find. OK, fine. <laughs> I'll lead the way. I think Peter would have liked a little bit more, but it's the first £20 in the charity fund kitty. We need to get down to work, though, as we've a £600 target to reach today. I tackle the kitchen first and find this quirky teapot by the well-known ceramics manufacturer, Carltonware. The company was established more than 100 years ago, but this piece is just a few years old. Jaunty still hopes it'll be the bidder's cup of tea, though, and make 20 to £30. I never expected to see so many teapots in a footballer's house. Surely the boys will have found something sports-related by now. Ah, uh, you can always find men in the garage, <laughs> can't you? You found anything? Yeah, Peter, oh, okay. come and have a look at this picture here. It's of you. Look I at that. I wonder where that got to, John, too, yes. Isn't, isn't that fabulous? Yes. So, so what's this from? Well, it's, um, it's probably one of my best moments in football, actually, uh, when we won the European Cup for the second time in Madrid. And... Um, Obviously, it was a personally it was a good game for me because it was a bit of a defensive display and I had quite a bit to do. And uh, how, yeah. how did you get hold of this picture? Um, I think it was it was presented to me uh, as a memento. What is it like to be like holding the cup on the pitch and just all those people in an absolute frenzy? Well, you can see I was quite pleased because <laughs> I'm actually kissing the cup and, and it's quite nice to have the, the cup on your own because normally you're pictured, you know, with somebody else or two or three teammates around. So that was quite a special moment and I'm so, kind of saluting the crowd as well. So I must have been facing the, the Forest supporters. I assume it wasn't the Hamburg supporters. <laughs> and um, obviously, um, well, I was kind of in a dream to start with because we, we weren't expected to get the trophy and then suddenly you realise that... Uh, you know, you'd achieve something really special. Wow. It really is a fantastic sporting icon moment. Yes. Uh, this is a photograph, so it's not a print, which is even better. Uh, I think to give it extra added value and provenance, it would be better if you could sign it, because I notice there's no signature. But if you could sign just the back of this board here, I think that would be absolutely wonderful. So what estimate are we going to put on this, then? Well, for auction purposes, I would put 50 to £75 on it. But that's a conservative estimate, and I'm sure if we get lots of um, interested dealers, interested parties wanting to bid on this, then sky's the limit. Oh, that's nice to hear. Anyway, it's a that's bit really of a surprise, good, but it? it's nice to hear. What a fantastic find, and such a personal item for Peter to be parting with as well. John T carries on the search in the garage and tops up the fund by another 20 to 30 pounds with this trio of mass-produced oil paintings. It's all money towards the target, Mr Herndon, but we've a long way to go yet. So no slacking, please, whilst Peter and I head to the garden. So tell me how you started in football. Was it something you always wanted to do? Uh, very much so. I think as a, as a youngster, uh, teenager, I sort of uh, knew straight away that I wanted to 
be involved in football and, uh, and signed for Leicester as an apprentice uh, at 15 years of age and eventually uh, made my debut for Leicester at 16 and a half which uh, I think it made me the youngest player to play for Leicester and, and, it, and I'd, I'd sort of taken over on that day from a fellow called Gordon Banks who was at Leicester at the time, England's goalkeeper because he was away on international duty and, uh, and I played against Everton and you know it was, uh, it was a great moment for me. And then obviously I took over on Gordon regularly when I was 17. The Leicester sold him to Stoke and, and I had all the pressure then of, uh, of trying to perform at the age of 17. Now, tell me a bit about your parents as well. Did they encourage this? Very supportive, yeah. I mean, I think these days some parents tend to go a bit too far. They, they get too involved and put too much pressure on the kids. But my parents weren't like that. They were very supportive and uh, they just tried to do everything they could to uh, help me uh, achieve what I wanted to do. What was your highlight for your career, personally, would you say? Highlight, I think, was playing in three World Cups uh, and obviously ending, getting to the semi-finals in 1990 and being a, very close to getting in the final, the width of a post, I think. But I think that those were, obviously, for England, were the highlights and, and getting you know, a record number of caps for England, 125. But I think at club level, in particular, under Brian Clough at Nottingham Forest, we did win two European Cups and league cups and league championship in, in my first three years there so it was kind of a dream come true for a club like Nottingham Forest. So when you were working alongside Brian Clough did you have the luxury like some of the um, players do now of going out and training in Spain and places like that? Uh, well we, we, we had a few unusual preparations under Brian Clough sometimes I mean he had, he had his own way of doing things but he was he was a you know an absolute genius of a manager. I, I remember one particular time we, we, we'd won the European Cup the first year against Malmo and Munich but the second year Brian Clough took us away for a week before the uh, before the match in Spain. Well I went to uh, Brian Clough and he said well we've got a lush training pitch when we get into the hills in Madrid and um, when we got there it was like hard tennis court so panic went set in and Brian Clough said well you better go off and find some grass then and I went with the train the only bit of grass I could find was a traffic island 15 yards in diameter with two trees on and I did two 15 minute sessions on that traffic island went out and probably played my best game for Nottingham Forest that I've, I've played and we won the cup 1-0 and, and I often think well did I need all that training all those years but uh, that was just a one-off. Now you said that was obviously you know for you you know one of the really good nights tell me a little bit about what it was like coming to face to face with Maradona and all the resulting media frenzy that came with it. It was obviously in Mexico in 86 and, and uh, we had this you know, famous game against Argentina and, and Maradona cheating really and you know, he sort of put the ball in with his hand when he knew he wasn't going to get it and I think the fact that the way he celebrated it and never really apologised mm. and still hasn't but as time's gone by it's sort of be become more of a, a, one of those famous moments mm. for all the wrong reasons really but uh, I mean I was fortunate as I said to, to then go and play in another World Cup and uh, you know, from a personal point of view, it, you know, it was something that happened. But, um, you know, I mean, it was it was happened to the team, not just me. Yeah, yeah so, of course. You know. The Maradona incident is one that Peter will never forget, and nor will the rest of the world. He's back to the search now, and John is still hard at work. I never doubted him for a second. He spotted another piece of sporting memorabilia, but is it something Peter would be happy to sell? Oh, so you're looking at my uh, World Cup 1990 print. I know. Is it a print that you might consider selling? I think so, yes. I mean, I, yeah. I remember, I, I think most of the players in the squad got presented with one after the World Cup. Because 1990, that was your big occasion. Got to the semi-final. Yes, yes. And it was a great achievement. I, I, think, yeah. I think when Chris Wadlett, the, the inside the post, it looked as though it was going to go in all the way and suddenly for some reason it came out. Because yeah, it and, went down uh, to penalties, didn't it? Right? Of course, yeah. yeah. Because the semi-final was against the Germans, wasn't it? Yes, yes. And of course they went on to win the whole title, didn't they? In uh, It was 1-0 against Argentina. Wasn't yeah, it? it was very close at the, at the end, but yeah. certainly, um, you know, it, it's still probably the highlight of, of my career with England because I think, well, it's the best we've ever done away from uh, these shores in, in a major championship. And yeah. obviously, um, you know, it's something to be proud of. But coming back to this fabulous print, um, I've noticed that there's no signatures on it at all, which is perfectly understandable as you were presented with it. Uh, but if you are interested in selling it, as it's a limited edition, you can see just down in the corner, the artist has signed it. Um, my suggestion is that if you could 
produce some kind of letter of authenticity to say that you are the owner or are the owner of this and if you could sign that as well it would certainly give it added interest because you are known for the last 30-40 years synonymously with the England soccer team yeah. so it's going to make a huge difference to value and if you could do that value I suppose what 75 to 100 pounds all oh, right well that's uh, that's encouraging yes I mean yeah. I think you know when I speak to people that the, the World Cup 90 is still very much something people do remember so hopefully you know that will um, yeah you know that will help towards it but that would be something I'd that's great. be prepared to do that's, yeah well I think we can score with that one let's hope so yeah <laughs> it'd be great <laughs> that's a fantastic find well done guys downstairs I found a pair of decanters they're only 40 to 50 years old, but in perfect condition, complete with their original stoppers. They'll be sent to auction with a purple glass vase at a combined value of 20 to 30 pounds. And there's another big addition when Peter decides to part with this England cricket shirt as well. Signed by the famous bowler and batsman Andrew Flintoff, we're hoping it'll be a high scorer with an 80 to 100 pound valuation. Peter's house has certainly come up trumps for us so far today, and he's dug out another auction candidate. Oh, Peter, have you found me anything yet? Yes, there? I think this have, could be of some use, John T. I don't know if you, what you think. What does this say on the outside of the box? The, the Lady Caroline Stakes, Royal Windsor, 8th of May 1989. So what's in here? <laughs> well, um, I actually used to be quite keen on uh, racehorse ownership and I did my first horse, she actually won a first race at uh, Newmarket at 33 to 1 and then ran in quite this prestigious race at, uh, at Windsor so, uh, and won that as well and this wow. was the, what I was presented with after the, after the race. So, so what was the horse called? Uh, between the sticks, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not. It couldn't be called anything else. No, exactly. <laughs> so what we're looking at here is a, a cruet set made of a salt cellar a pepper pot and a mustard pot as well. Uh, now when it comes to value a set like this it obviously has a silver appearance uh, but there's a difference in price for something that's electroplated or something that's solid silver. So one is looking for hallmarks and I can't see any hallmarks so that means that this set will be electroplated. So a set like this has to be worth what 25 35 pounds all right all right yeah. so uh, you know it will all help yes but it does mean that you and i've got a bit more work to do more more searching yes, yes? of course yes right. yes it's not a massive valuation but hopefully the bidders will take a shine to the set when it reaches the sale room john t tops up the charity fund by another 30 to 50 pounds when he finds this set of six fruit bowls made for the famous London store Liberty & Co. Our list of items for auction is getting longer and longer. That's what I like to see. So tell me a little bit about your family. Uh, well, I've got t t two boys. Not, not men now, I think you would say they are. Yeah, How they're... old are they? Um, Mike's uh, 34. He's, uh, we're, we're expecting our second grandchild soon. And um, Sam's nearly 30 now, so... Uh, Sam was uh, one that actually, you know, played played football. What do you think it was like? I mean, have they ever discussed with you what it was like having such a famous father in such a cool sport? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think they, you know, as the years uh, gone by, that you know, they they just adapted to things. I don't think it, it's easy, you know, when you you've got, uh, you know, the, the, there's there's a good side to it and and, and not so good side. But um, you know, I think I think they're uh, pretty proud. So tell me a little bit about what's happened through your career because obviously we were saying earlier about the amount of money footballers earn today you know and the pros and cons of that i mean you've had some bad times as well haven't you yeah i mean um yeah i had a one bad spell i mean i, I in the 90s i got involved in a few things in you know the property market and uh, you know i used to sort of like my horse racing and i got quite a few horses and um you know, I like to have a bit of a punt as well. So it, all the things combined, plus the circumstances, uh, you know, and it was kind of at that time of my life when I was coming to the end of my career as well. So, uh, yeah, things went a bit pear-shaped, but uh, fortunately we managed to uh, to get over that. And, uh, you know, and obviously things are, um, you know, been going well. Now, tell me a little bit about the charity that you're involved in that you want to make this money for. How did you first come across it? Well, it's Disability Sport England, which obviously, um, you know, is for disabled athletes and, you know, it appealed to me for obvious reasons. You know, I 
you know, I like winning myself and, uh, you know, to see the desire to, to succeed, but, you know, with, with uh, disabled athletes is, is, is fantastic. And there's always things that need doing. I mean, you know, physios and, and accommodation for events, things like that. You know, even if you can just help, you know, one athlete by, by something like this, it's, uh, it's going to be worthwhile. And, uh, you know, that's what I'm hoping to do. Well, it's obviously a very worthwhile cause, and I'm pretty sure we can definitely make you that money. Only though, if we can track down John and hope he's found <laughs> something else to sell, shall we? Yeah, let's go and have a look. <laughs> We're only up to £340 so far, so we need to rack up some pretty impressive fines if we're going to make that £600 for charity. Peter digs out a set of boxed, silver-plated fish knives and forks, which he's happy to contribute to the auction hall. About 80 years old, he inherited them from his grandparents, and John T values the set at 20 to 30 pounds. But there's a much larger addition when Peter decides to sell a second piece of cricketing memorabilia. We're hoping this ball, signed by the Australian cricketer Shane Warne, will make a massive 100 to 150 pounds. Our rummage day is very nearly over, but Peter has one more rather special item. Look what I've just found. I don't know if this wow. would be any uh, any good. Is that the World Cup? Yes, it is the World Cup, yes. Really? <laughs> it's so nice to see like it. it. <laughs> 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 Glad to get my hands on it, finally. <laughs> um, so where did it come from? I think each member of the squad was presented uh, with one in Spain in my, in my first World Cup. I can't be totally sure about that. My memory's not that clear, but right. it does ring a bell. And I've got a feeling, I remember it may have been a limited edition. I don't know if it was or not. By definition, this would be limited edition, and I'm convinced that this would have been made for the commemoration of the World Cup. Mm -hmm. So it was never marketed. The amazing thing about this particular World Cup, you know, the, this model, it, it was never put on the open market. And that's right. what dealers love. Yes. Collectors love to get their hands on those items that ordinarily aren't exposed to the marketplace. Really. Yes. This is a uni yes. unique it item. Is. And probably every player that entered into the competition would have been presented with one of these. And here we see clearly stamped on the underside Ladro. It says Ladro just by looking at it. Yeah. You don't have to turn it upside down to see that it was made by Ladro. Yes. The colours there are very, are very Ladro. I mean, look how pale that blue is. That's very typical Ladro. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, how do you value something like this then, apart from the connection to Peter, obviously? Um, going on what rare Ladro items do sell for. And uh, my hunch at the moment is we're looking at £350, £450 pounds at auction. That's a sensible auction estimate to put right. on something like this. Mm. Um, and I'm convinced, uh, if we have the right buyers in the room, that uh, you know, we could go much higher than that as well. I'm really right. convinced of so that. So if somebody wants to lift the World Cup... If they really, <laughs> yes. yes. They could yeah. buy that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've had yeah. a couple of goes myself. <laughs> 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 so you're happy for this to go to auction then? Yeah, very yeah. much so, I think so. Yes, it's, it's, it is a very nice piece, but... Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think, uh, like I say, it's for, for a good charity. So, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be prepared to let it go. Well, it's a wonderful fun. addition to our fund because you wanted to raise £600 for the charity. That brings the total up to... £810. Oh, great. Well oh, great. Yes, I'm very well pleased with that. That's yes, fantastic, that's a, that's isn't a, that's it? Very good. Great. And we have good. got to get everything to auction, of course. And as John T rightly points out, it depends who's in the room at the day. But, I mean, that's a great place because you're going to attract the Ladro collectors and, of course, as you say, anyone who wants to hold the World Cup. Talking of which, I think you it's my again. turn now. Yes. <laughs> 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 It's been a fascinating day searching through Peter's lovely home. And as I'd hoped, we've got some top quality sporting memorabilia winging its way to auction. There's the photo of Peter kissing the European Cup in 1980, which Jonty valued at 50 to 75 pounds. The print of the 1990 World Cup squad, which kicks off with a 75 pound to 100 pound estimate. And we're all hoping the star player will be the Ladro World Cup. With a massive 350 to 450 pound valuation, will it prove to be our lucky mascot in the sale room? Still to come on cash in the celebrity attic. Peter hasn't quite got the hang of driving a hard bargain. This is going a lot better than I thought, so thank you very much. <laughs> Wrong just, thing to just, say. Just say. <laughs> but he soon learns how to get the bidders excited. Excellent. Keep going. Come on. Keep going. 35 pounds in the corner. 
So, will we be winners or losers when the final hammer falls? Now, it's been a couple of weeks since we had a good look around Peter Shilton's home in Warwickshire and we found lots of mementos, collectibles and antiques, a lot of them related to his sporting career, of course. Now, we've brought those to Bamford's auctioneers here in Derby. So let's just hope that today the bidders put us top of the league when his items go under the hammer. It looks like it's shaping up to be a busy day here. That's what we like to see. Fingers crossed we'll have some football fanatics in the room so that Peter's lots are high scorers. Someone who's hoping for success is expert John T. Herndon. Uh, good morning, John T. Lawn. I hate to say it, but I think that might be the closest you ever come to holding the cup. <laughs> Do you know what I was thinking? Just the very <laughs> same myself, Lawn. Isn't it lovely? It's fantastic. Not only is it the, of course, obviously Peter Shilton's World Cup, but it's made by Ladro, which is highly collectible as well. Well, apparently, according to the auctioneers, there's been a lot of interest in that. Now, there were quite a lot of items, weren't there? Some very iconic pictures, particularly one. I know, Peter kissing the European Cup. I think that was a fabulous quality picture and it really sums him up as well, so I hope that does very well. And of course, we've got the, the picture of the whole of the team as well, of the England team. Uh, that was very good indeed. Well, let's just hope today that that whole Shilton connection can really make a difference. So shall we go and meet him? Well, if the bidders are as keen as John T, then the pounds should be rolling in in no time. Today's sale has kicked off already, so we need to find our star goalkeeper. There you are. <laughs> Hello, Lord. How are, John, how how are you? you? Yeah, I found you at last. Time. Absolutely, and you've had time to have a bit of a rummage then. Have you seen your lots on display? Uh, I had a brief look earlier on, yes. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're looking okay still. Now, we know that you're obviously familiar on a football pitch, but how familiar are you in an auction room? Oh, that's the first one I've been to, so oh, yes, it is. So, I'm really looking forward to it. But, uh, I mean, the atmosphere is uh, quite special, really, and uh, it's, it's quite busy here today, so that could be a good thing. Well, as you can hear, the auction has already started, so for us, our game's about to start too. Yes, well, uh, yeah, look forward to it and I uh, hope, hope we have a good match. Absolutely. <laughs> Peter's certainly sounding eager, so I hope we're in for a successful day. We don't have to wait long before his first item comes up for sale. Now, what's the estimate on this, John T? Well, because it's, it's really connected to Peter, and as you say, it was the, you know, the pinnacle of your, your England career, I put 75 to 100 pounds on it. All right. So Go on, OK, OK. Should be interesting. <laughs> this will be personally signed, will it not? It'll be personally signed to whoever is the successful bidder uh, by just about the best goalkeeper England's ever had. And... Bless him, man. It's going to be a great lot, and we've got interest in it. And seventy pounds, lower end estimate starts it, and five somewhere. Seventy-five, eighty, and five, ninety, and five. At ninety-five in the centre, one hundred now. At ninety-five pounds only. Right. Ninety-five pounds and a bit of ink to sign it. <laughs> yeah, of course, yes, yes. And we're off with the first cash in the pot, and Peter's first lot winging its way to a new home. We're looking to raise £600 today, though, so there's a long road ahead. Yeah. Our second lot is the pair of decanters and glass vase, with a more modest price tag. So we want £20 to £30 for these. That's not yeah. bad. I mean, you're talking about most £10 a piece. That seems yeah. quite cheap well, to me. Well, price them hopefully sell, so let's see what happens. OK. And two bids on it, both exactly the same, both at £20. £22 do I see. At uh, £20 and two Come now. At uh, 20 for the decanter at £20. Twenty pounds. So Twenty pounds. Yeah. Oh, yes, that's all right, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's, uh, there we are. That was painless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the decanters top up the charity fund by another few pounds, and hot on their heels is the set of Liberty bowls, valued at thirty to fifty pounds. At twenty-eight, stand to the right. Twenty-eight. Do I see thirty? With you for twenty-eight pounds. Well done. Coming in just under Jonty's estimate, it's another solid result. Perhaps our next lot could push the prices even higher, though. Peter was presented with this cruet set after his racehorse won at Windsor in 1989. But will it be the bookie's favourite in the sale room? So, £20 to start. 20 is bid at £20, second row, 20 and 5. 25, 30, 30 and 5. 35, 40, 40 and 5. Yes, 45, 50, 50 and 5. He sounds like a racing comedy, too. £50, 5 do I see? At £50, do I see 55 anywhere? 
at 50. Well done. It's yours. Yeah, very yeah. good indeed. We got over that first hurdle through the goal and... She wasn't home. a hurdler, she was a flat well, horse. Well, you know. I was <laughs> <laughs> Oops, that showed me. The cruet set certainly proved to be a thoroughbred antique, though, selling for double Jaunty's lower estimate. Will our next lot have similar success? It's the sort of Turkish-style coffee set that you bought for your parents some time ago. Quite a long time ago, uh, Anna, yes. But I bought it in uh, one of the markets there and brought it back as a present for my parents, but it was so unusual at the time. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, it was, I think um, there was a couple of glasses broken, but, um, yeah, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed. OK. Where should we start this? 20 pounds? 20? 10? At 10, 15, 15, 20. 20 in the corner? 20, yes. And five, 25, 30. 30, go on. 30 and five. One more. A meet halfway, 32, 32, 32. 35. <laughs> 35, Excellent. 38. Keep going. Come on. Keep going. <laughs> 35 pounds in the corner. At 35 pounds. Thank you both, 35. We well 35 done. pounds. Oh, well done. There we That's go. Awesome. Very good, very pleased with that. Good, good. Our charity fund is looking pretty healthy so far, and Peter is certainly a satisfied customer. We're nearly halfway through the sale, and it's time for a special item and a special auctioneer to take centre stage. Now, I'd like you to give a very warm Derbyshire welcome and a round of applause to Mr Peter Shilton, yes. who'll sell the next lot. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, before I start, I'd just like to say it's a tremendous pleasure for me to be here today. Um, it's one of the highlights of my career was uh, winning the European Cup for the second time. And um, if it's all right, I'd now. like to start the bidding off at... Uh, well, if you want something done, pounds. do it yourself. Thank you very much. So £30 down there, £40, £40, anyway, £50, yes. Anybody else? £60, £70, thank you very much. There's a lady over there, thank you very much. Uh, £80, £80 a lady down there as well. £90, this is going a lot better than I thought, so thank you very much. <laughs> just, 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 say. just say, <laughs> so £90, we're after £90, yes? I'll give you £90. £90, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Any of the audience, give me £100. 110, thank you very much, much appreciated. Uh, 120 then, he's going for 110. Yes. 120, anybody give me 130 pounds? Yes, anybody else? 140 pounds. We've gone past what Jonty's valuation was. Sorry about that, thank you Jonty, well pleased with that. So we're, I forgot what we're after now. What we have? 150, no, okay. 150 with James. Yes. Yeah. Anybody in the audience want to beat that? Have we got any mysterious buyers coming in the meantime? Okay, it's going once. Gavel. Oh yeah. It's going <laughs> twice. It's going three pounds, uh, three times. <laughs> That's the even, even, I'm, even I'm excited now. It's going the third time for 150 pounds. Thank you very, very much. Sold. Well done, James. James. Thank you very much. <laughs> That was great, Peter. Fantastic. Look at that. What a man. Very much. <laughs> Appreciate it. How, how, how's that feel? Now, compared to winning the European Cup twice, how does that compare? It's gone very close to it. <laughs> <laughs> Peter did a fantastic job on the rostrum, with me as his glamorous assistant, of course. And auctioneer James Lewis had certainly taken rather a shine to the special photo. I do hope that I don't go to too many charity auctions with Peter Shilton selling because I think I paid a little bit too much for that picture. Thank you, James, for such a generous bid. That's a fantastic addition to our total so far. We've had a successful first half, but just how healthy is our charity fund looking? Right, now, we're halfway through the sale of our lots, anyway. How have you found it so far, Peter? Yeah, it's been very good, very yeah? interesting, yes, and... Um, yeah, very enlightening, well and uh, I, hopefully we've uh, we've done quite well, I think, at the moment. Well, you want to raise £600, of course, and so far, I can tell you, we've made £348. Well, that's, oh, well, that's not too bad, yes. So we're quite just good, yeah. over halfway, still with some spectacular pieces to come, Jonty. Well beating items, the and World Cup, for goodness sake, and all those uh, cricket memorabilia, all sorts of great things to look forward so to. So we need a good half-time team talk, and we go out for the second half with uh, a bit yeah. of confidence. And time now to take a bit of a break before we come back for the second half. Yeah. So, oranges, Five. anyone? Yeah, let's Follow go. Follow me. <laughs> Five pounds. We've got over half of our total in the bank already, and our amateur auctioneer is still buzzing from his experience on the rostrum. 
although I've played in front of 100,000 people at Wembley, um, you know, I sort of uh, lost it a little bit on that one. But uh, I'm glad it went for that sort of money because it was, uh, you know, a very special uh, a moment for me. Now, if you're planning on heading to your local auction house, be aware that charges such as commission will be added to your bill, whether you're buying or selling. The sale is still in full swing, so we get back into position before we miss any of Peter's lots. Next to go under the hammer is the box set of silver-plated cutlery, valued at 20 to 30 pounds. And uh, can I start the bidding at 15 pounds, please? 15 is bid at 15 and 18 now. 18 has at 20, do I see? 20 and two. 22, 25. Ooh, hello. At 22 pounds in the centre and five now. At 22. 22 pounds. Yes. Well, that's, that's not right. too bad, yes. Well, it seems like a bargain, but it is just over Jonty's lower end estimate. And it's all money in the charity fund. The lots are selling thick and fast today, and Peter's oil paintings are up next. At 25, all done. And sell right within Jonty's 20 to 30 pound estimate. Followed quickly by the Carlton Ware teapot, which doesn't prove quite as popular. At 18 pounds, right at the back at 18. But still makes just two pounds under its 20 to 30 pound price tag. Our lots are making on or around their estimates in the second half of today's sale, so we can't complain. But with over £150 still to find, I'm glad we've got some more expensive items up for sale next. Surely the cricket shirt signed by Andrew Flintoff will be a high scorer. I've put 80 to £100 on it, but, but Freddie, like your good self, is a national institution, so let's see what happens. One of the England greats given by one of the football greats, where should we start it? Let's say, well, I've got two bids, absentee bids, and I'll start at 50 pounds. 50, 60, 60 on the phone, 70, 80, 80, 90, 100. No, at 90 pounds, that's cheap. 90 pounds. Nice. 90, nice. 100, that's 100, that's 100, 100 in the centre, 110, 120, 130, 140. Oh, it's worth it. Don't say no, that's the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> Try Quite again. right. <laughs> 140, thank you. 145 I've got, and 150 beats it. You know what, I'll lose it for five pounds. Oh, no. 150 yes. in the middle of the room. <laughs> Add 150 pounds. <laughs> she won't, she won't give up, will she? <laughs> Add 150, 160 anywhere. Add 150, well fought. Add 150 pounds. Anywhere else at 150. Yours, well done. Yes, quite pleased good. with that, pleased with that. That was quite a struggle though, wasn't That's it? That's about as long as a Freddie Flintoff innings. <laughs> <laughs> the auctioneer certainly worked hard for us on that one. As our second cricket lot goes under the hammer, will the bidders be any more eager to dig deep? This is the cricket ball signed by Shane Warne and nicely presented there and I can start the bidding at £70, 70, 70 pounds, £70, he's got, but we want more than that. Five, sir, third row. 80, five, 90, five. At 90 pounds, 95, do I see? At nine, 95, 110, 110. Yes, on the phone, 120, 120, 120 taken. At 120, 130. No, at 120, it's against the phone at 120 pounds. It's against the phone, back in the room and selling. How's that? Here we are. Oh, very <laughs> it's the only good. bit of cricket very I know, <laughs> sorry. I don't know if the boys were impressed with my sporting knowledge, but with another massive addition to the kitty, I think they'll let me off. Those two sporting lots did really well, but our most exciting one is still to come. The ladder is fantastic. It is one of those things that appeals to so many people. And the fact that you couldn't buy one of those, you couldn't acquire one of those if you're a Ladro collector, is really gonna put the pressure on the collectors. The only way you could have got one of these is actually if you were playing or officiating in the World Cup. So, should do well. We have absentee bids. I think we have two phone bids as well. And two phone bids, two here absentee bids. The low end of the estimate at 360 pounds, 380 do I see? 380, 400, 420, 440. Oh, this is so good. 440 has it, 460. 460 phone one, at 460, 480. It's against you in the room, at 460. 480, 480 phone two, at 480, 500. All the bidding very close together, 
at £480. £490? £490. Waving at £490. £500. Mm -hmm. £500 mm -hmm. do I see? At £490, do I see £500 anywhere? Selling once, twice, third and last. It's yours. £490, please, much, Yeah, well. Are you pleased with that? Yeah, I'm very pleased. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's more than I thought it would be, actually, to be fair. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm glad it appealed to so many people as well. Well, that certainly took us well over the finishing line and towards a pretty impressive result, by my reckoning. I have a feeling our original £600 target was safe long ago, but just how much money have we made for charity today? How did you find it, Peter? Um, yeah, I was pleased overall. I thought, uh, yeah, it was very exciting. I, I enjoyed uh, doing a bit of auctioneering. Good, good. <laughs> Although uh, I got overexcited at the end, but uh, yeah, it was, uh, it, was, it was very good. Well, obviously, you wanted to raise £600 for your chosen good cause, Hopefully, Peter. Yeah. Well, it's a bit bitter than that, I must admit. I think you'll be quite pleased because we've raised. One thousand two hundred and three no. pounds. Yeah. Yes. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, That's well double the amount that. you wanted. I can't believe that. That's fantastic. That's oh, really good. So Peter raised a wonderful one thousand two hundred and three pounds for Disability Sports England, a charity which our footballer is very passionate about. You know, being a sportsman myself, we appreciate. Um, what it takes to perform on on, uh, on any uh, football pitch or arena, and I've seen uh, some of the events that are put on by the charity, and, and the effort and the dedication by disabled athletes to try and achieve their best uh, performance is incredible, really. Among other projects, the charity works with schools to help children of all abilities participate in sporting activities. Assistant head teacher Simon Harris is today running a bowls type game. Bocce is a Paralympic sport, so the great thing is for our students is they can see role models all the way up to Great Britain standard players. We do focus all the time on the children's abilities, not their disabilities. So we look at how good the children are, we look at what they can do, and we try and make them better. And so it's a really nice balance between playing sport for fun and introducing people to sport, but also then serious competitive sport. I still have that feeling myself of still wanting to win, you know, that feeling of uh, achieving something. That's what makes you tick to a certain degree, and I think that's very important for, uh, you know, for any age group. Yeah.